Hello everyone, welcome back to my movie review, and um, I got another movie to review. It's a, uh, this is an old school, this is part of my horror movie collection series I've been trying to get through, 100 movies, a uh, horror collection. Um, this one is called The Long Hair of Death, uh, 1964, 100 minutes, black and white. Um, this, I was, I have to say, first of all, I'm not going to make this long because I was very disappointed with what they consider to be horror to put to pack into this series. And there was like so many bad horror movies back in the day, I figured they they have a good selection of bad horror. And um, I was just disappointed because this does not seem like a horror movie at all. It seemed, this movie was more like off a Shakespearean play, I swear. It seemed like Shakespeare could have wrote this. This might as well have been Hamlet. If you consider this movie horror, then you could, could, would consider, like, Hamlet horror, you know, it's like, a, um, let me just get right to it, International Movie Database gave this a 6.0, and, uh, Rotten Tomatoes didn't have it scored yet, but the audience, like, 40, 47, 47% of the audience liked it, I, I should say, before I go any further, this wasn't a bad movie, um, I'm only disappointed because of the fact I don't consider it a horror, that's just the way I feel. I, I, I think it's just true if you watched it. It's, it's not... There There was some couple of really cool parts. I'm like, oh my god, it was like a skeleton. It was like, looked like he was breathing or something. I was just like, that's cool, but it doesn't make it a horror film. This was more of just like a Shakespeare play. And uh, more than anything. So I just... I, that's why I'm disappointed. Um, now, this is a movie from Italy. So the original title is something in Italian that I just can't read, okay? But in America, it's called The Long Hair of Death. Um, the director is um, Antonio Margarita. I probably butchered it. It's uh, his real name. His director pen name is Anthony M. Dawson. Anthony M. Dawson. He did a couple, at least a couple, really good films. The two I'll mention is You're the Hunter from the Future back in 1983. Um, and, uh, Cannibal, Cannibal Holocaust, no, I'm sorry, Cannibal Apocalypse, uh, back in, like, 1980. Um, only a real good actress you could probably know, and she's done a lot, is Barbara Steele, she plays in this, uh, there's a couple of actors, a couple of others that's been in a while, been in a lot of other films and stuff, maybe, like, Alfred Hitchcock or something, and, uh, but, you know, that's, she's, like, the main character. Now, uh, a quick synopsis. Well, first, this takes this movie takes place at the end of the 15th century, and while this is going on, it's also the beginning of the plague. Yeah, the Black Plague, the infamous Black Plague, is going on while this is going on, happening. Um, outside of the castle and everything. Um, this movie is also dubbed from, um, Italian. So it's English dubbed, black and white. Um, this movie, it's just a quick synopsis, this, I wouldn't, it's just so ridiculous how this is. I'll just read a quick synopsis real quick from here. Um, a woman is put to death being accused of witchcraft. Um, her daughter confronts the man who accused the mother of the crime and discovers the true reason of accusation, but loses her life, and in doing so, the youngest daughter is taken in the man's family and is raised by them. Basically, the youngest daughter is raised by the Count, the king of this land, uh, with intent to marry her off to her, to, I'm sorry, marry her off to his son. Um, when the girl comes to age, they get married. Uh, the, 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 her deceased sister returns to exact her revenge upon the family. So now, um, the mother, very beginning of the film, gets, uh, acute, is already being carried off to the pyre, if you will, to the, she's going to be burned at the stake, and, um, the youngest daughter, both actually daughters, oldest and youngest, see this happening, uh, one is, runs away from it to try to get the truth, but is stopped by the count, who pushes her off a freaking waterfall ledge and kills her, the other youngest daughter is, um, he adopts as his own, but later comes to, comes to, um, in, a life, in his life, later in his life, in her life, when she gets older, she marries, uh, or he basically gives her to his oldest son. Um, 
the very beginning of the movie when she gets burned at the stake, she's crying her innocence out, like, I'm not a witch, but the first, second thing out of her mouth is like, I curse you. Okay, uh, that's, that's a joke. When you are accused of witchcraft, you might not want to put curses on anybody. Again, this makes me think, you know, uh, a curse upon all your houses. Um, he's like, I curse, she's like, I curse you, and I curse you, and I curse the king, and I curse his son. And it's just like, dude, if you're being accused, don't need to be cursing people. That's the last thing you need to be doing when you're trying to profess your innocence, yo. Um, anyways, it's just like, it goes on. She dies at the pyre, and later in life, is like a little time lapse later in life that she, now, the daughter has grown up. The youngest daughter's grown up, and again, the uh, Black Plague is kind of happening outside of the castle. You know, everybody started to get sick, winding up at the gates of the castle, and they can't do, deal with that. He, but to appease, but the king and the count, who wishes to appease the soul of like the witch that happened a long time ago, he feels like because the curse is happening, he's going to like die this horrific fate. So to do so, to like let him off the hook, as it were, to think he could be let off the hook, he tries to give um, his son's hand in marriage to the daughter, or to the daughter that uh, cursed cursed him. Not the daughter cursed him, but the da the mother of the daughter. Um, now this happens. He marries her, and basically, he, the, the god it happens a couple of times, but he like. It's just like every so often, first the king tried to throw himself on this other woman that he loved, and that's why she's put to stake, uh, put to, um, put to the, burned at the stake. And then, like, the son does the same thing, throws himself on these other girls, and, like, again, his wife, who obviously doesn't want anything to do with them, it's just, like, full of just, like, you know, it's happened. This, like, the kings would do this, obviously, it's just, like, rape, okay. Um... She goes on to say, you can have my body, but you will never have my soul. And it's like, yada, yada, yada. Um, while the plague is happening, they decide to go to the church. The church is where you should go. Um, while this is happening, the right after they got married, the son and the daughter of the woman that uh, burned at the stake, she, the daughter goes outside and kind of like asks her mother, Helen, it's like, what should I do? Give me help. I know this is wrong. She goes back inside the church, and not too long after that is when, like, you see, like, a bolt of lightning come down and, like, breaks the um, casket open to where the Helen died or whatever, the burned at the stake person. Um, then, she, then, like, as full body, she, she slowly goes to where she gets her skin back and everything. I mean, that was kind of cool to see, but it wasn't really that hardcore. Um, it was just like stop, start of the film. It's like shows a little bit more skin on her and stop. and show a little bit more skin on her and stop. But, um, typical fashion. She, anyways, she's reborn and goes into the church. Basically, first thing, but this gives the king pretty much a heart attack and he dies. Uh, they bring her to the house, to the castle, and she doesn't know who she is. They, well, she doesn't know who she is. Um... They believe her to be Mary, the oldest daughter of this burnt, of the mother who was burnt at the stake. So as they go on with that, they, now the, uh, the um, prince, who was taken over as the count now, he falls in love with Mary and basically throws himself on her again. And they decide they're in love and that they have to deal away with his wife, um, which is... Um, uh, whatever, the youngest girl. So now, I guess, now we're starting to get to this. Um, he tries to poison his, he, he tries to poison his wife and bury her in this, um, concrete, it's not like underground or anything, but it was in this, uh, little room. So it's like the, it's above ground casket, but it's, the room is underground, if that makes any sense at all. Um, but it poisons her, makes sure she's dead, and puts her in the casket. This is to make sure they both, him and Mary, can get married. And Mary's a part of this plan, too. She knows about it. Because um, she's like, I want to be with you. Uh, he buries her next day, like, when they, he, he's like, this plan's going to come together. They're going to 
he buried, he, I don't know why he does this, why did you, he buried her, and then he immediately took her out and placed her in bed to get caught that she was dead. Why did you do that to begin with? Why not just leave her in bed when you poisoned her? I don't know. I didn't feel like rewinding it to figure it out. He take again, he puts her in the, he buries her in this concrete tomb, takes her out again, puts her in bed, lets her get caught by the maid. The maid is not surprised, and he's like, uh, is Mary in there? Does she sleep well? And, not Mary, I'm sorry, but it's the youngest girl. It's like, is my wife in there? Does she sleep well? And the maid's like, yeah, she slept fine. And she has, like, so much hunger. And he runs in there real quick, and all she's gone, but all the food's gone, too. So she ate. And now he's freaking out, um, thinking, that, oh, my God, now I'm like, now what's going on? And she's not showing up anywhere. His wife, she's like, dinner time, and she feels like she's ill, so she stays in bed. And he can't seem to find her wherever she is. Um... But so on and so forth, so forth. The priest of this little town decides to throw like a Thanksgiving parade, not really parade as a word, but a Thanksgiving that announces like the end of the plague, like everyone's, all of us have survived, have survived, and uh, just to give thanks, you know, to the Lord for having everybody that survived this here and help. Uh, the king or count is like very just not in, the mind, not in his right mindset because of everything that's going on. Um, he's trying to marry, he's trying to get involved with this one girl, but he has this wife he's trying to kill, and he can't find her, but it, it didn't kill her. He, he goes crazy the day of Thanksgiving, goes down to the tomb and pushes the tomb open, and there is like a big decaying body in the tomb. He's like, yes, you kill I did kill you. I'm just going crazy, but I did kill you. He turns around and immediately sees her full body, uh, the, his wife full body. He's like, no, I killed you. And then he turns and sees his his mistress girlfriend, who's actually who's Mary, um, Mary, whatever her name is. He sees her. He's like, she's like, no, this, I'm not Mary. I'm actually Helen the girl that your father burned at the stake, that's that's my body you're seeing right there. So she's a ghost. She's been a ghost this whole time. And now he's even more crazy. Now he's just like, he's, it spends like 10, 15 minutes trying to get out of the tomb, this like underground tomb place. And while like he's every turn, every time he turns around, he's seeing um, Helen slash Mary. Um... So that's that's freaking him out. He finally gets a top, and he he gets pushed into this life size wicker man, as it were. As it were, they were out while Thanksgiving is going on. They're going to burn this statue of hair um, to represent the thank the Lord above that everyone, all the people that survived, here's their hair, and to, they're going to burn all this like life human-sized body of hair and wood to say thanks to the Lord that we all survived. Now, I, I mentioned that because at the very end, the Count gets thrown into this little um, contraption, which is like, looks, you know, it's a body of hair with like a base of a skull on it, and he gets thrown in and gets strapped in because of this ghost, you know, the ghost of Helen straps this Count or this Prince inside and shuts the door. So now we got that and and at the very end, he gets burned at the stake, like, right then. He's like, yeah, we're going to burn this, yay. And But who sets it afire but act the actual daughter, the youngest daughter, who's obviously still alive now. And he, she's okay. And she is the one that lights the pyre, as it were, to side him flame. And the end. That was it. That I don't consider this horror at all. At all. I only did it because I watched it anyway. I might as well do a review on it. I'm... Next time it's going to be better. I'm going to have a new review actually coming out. It's going to be better in this. Again, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And, um, yeah, but thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. I'm going to have a better review out very soon. Thank you.